Hello, and welcome to Using OKR Philosophies in the Hospitality Industry. We are bringing you our book knowledge and working experience of OKRs, or objectives and key results, to the hospitality industry. I'm your host, Courtney Mallory, and today we're going to talk about Measure What Matters by John Doerr with Nicole Couturufo. We'll discuss the ins and outs of OKRs and offer listeners a special surprise at the end. So be sure to listen all the way through um, for all the details. And before we jump in, a little bit about myself. I studied at Rosen College Hospitality Management in Orlando, Florida, where I focused, study, focused and studied event management and then moved to Washington, D.C., where I worked for uh, association, various associations in the city. Uh, now I am in South Korea and I'm working with as a consultant with Do It Well. And I want to introduce Nicole uh, Katurufo. Welcome. Thank you, Courtney. I'm so excited to start this book, to, reading this book together today, uh, Measures What Matters. Um, I love project management. I am a certified project manager and a lecturer of guest experience digital transformation at Roma Trey University in Rome. And I have co-founded Do It Well in 2019 as a digital consulting company in Orlando, Florida. Uh, I do have some experience with OKRs, working with digital companies and with our clients. So I'm very excited today to share some uh, cases and some best practices with you all. But the main point is starting reading the book together as a book club. And today we'll be covering three chapters, the first three chapters of the book. So Courtney, take it away. Great. Uh, let's jump in. So the book actually shares this uh, quote uh, by Yogi Berra. If you don't know where you're going, you might not get there. So uh, let's just jump in and let's uh, start talking about what OK Ours are. So OKRs stands for objectives and key results. So first let's focus on the objective side. Objective side. It is primarily just the object the direction of like where your project or where your um, vision of business wants to go. Uh, it can cultivate program and management skills. And the key result um, is has to be measurable. So did I do it? Yes or no? So an example would be you want to cultivate project uh, and program management skills and a key result would be uh, to attend at least six trainings on whatever skill you want to learn. Uh, there's also um, OKRs are focused in the sense that it's collaborative. It's a collaborative goal setting protocol for either your team, your company and individuals. So it's a great tool that you can apply in all situations. Um, but it's not a silver bullet. It can't sub substitute for sound judgment or strong leadership and a creative workspace. So those are still essential things that are needed to accompany OKRs. And uh, another aspect about uh, the key results, it's a benchmark um, and it can monitor how we get to the objectives. Um, so usually the way key results can be written are it's not a result unless it has a number. So like in the example that I just mentioned, uh, to attend at least six trainings. So that number six can show, oh, if you attended four trainings that, you know, you've made 80% of the way, but the six attending six trainings will show you 100% of um, fulfilling that key result of your um, OKRs. Uh, so our second point of today will be discussing about um, how it's important to pair your OKRs with your management. And reading this book, Measure What Matter Matters by John Doerr has been very fascinating, very eye-opening. Um, we've been using OKRs at, at Do It Well, but just reading more about the history and the purpose of uh, this tool, it's been um, very fascinating. So the father of OKRs, his name is Andy Grove, and he worked uh, with mostly with Intel in the United States. And the way he kind of talked about the old management style, um, they called it management by objectives. 
um, where goals were centrally planned and slowly trickled down from the hierarchy. Um, some companies with high commitment to these MBOs could lead to protect productivity gains um, of 56%, but it wasn't a, a win-all kind of situation. It could also have where your work commitment was low, you could only have 6% gains. Um, and a lot of the uh, instances of these MBOs where the performance or the key performance indicators were also tied to salary. So from the slide, you could see the difference between what the old system was like um, primarily in the 60s, but I feel like a lot of that management style has continued to slowly um, be around in today's businesses and the management style. So um, a big part of the top down of the MBOs, but with, in, with OKRs, it's from bottom up or sideways. Nicole, do you wanna add to this little um, section? Um, also, a, a big difference between the MBOs from um, the 60s was the annual. They would only check them annually. Um, with OKRs, it's something where you can do quarterly, monthly. Uh, at Duo, well, we do more of an agile kind of project structure. So for us, we're looking at OKRs for each almost each agile um, sprint. So it could be one to two weeks where you're using OKRs and um, you're checking your uh, focus and you're making sure you stay on track. Um, Andy Grove also came up with a basic OKR hygiene. Um, so this, these are some good over, overarching ideas of what we're gonna get into more later on, but for OKRs, less is more. A uh, few extremely well-chosen objectives uh, which impart a clear message about what we say yes to and what we say no to. Um, so your objective needs to be very clear. It needs to be a very focused directive. And then with that, try to pick three to five. Um, and each objective should try to be tied to at least five or fewer key results. So with each objective, try to have three to five objectives, and then within the objective, try to have less than five key results. Uh, another aspect of OKR hygiene is set goals from the bottom up, and that is to promote involvement. So through reading the book through Intel and um, different stories like Google and some other tech industries, um, they tell some great stories of working on how Gmail was created and how um, YouTube and all these different items were created, but those were really OKRs set by individuals at those companies. And everyone in the company can see the OKRs. And so the management saw the OKR for trying to create YouTube or trying to create Gmail. And then it became a, a, a product of um, that company. And so um, it really can empower people to be able to um, dream big and not feel like their, their work or their salary is tied to it. Uh, also, no dictating. Um, OKRs are a social contract to establish priorities um, where to define and how progress will be measured. Um, so just making sure that your... Um, Priorities are kind of ingrained with the OKRs and also that you're not telling a specific department or person kind of what to do, but it's more of a general thing. And stay flexible. OKRs should, um, you know, some objectives and key results you'll get done and some you won't. Uh, Nicole, do you wanna um, add something to the stay flexible part with your experience of OKRs? Yeah, sure. Um, I think one thing that I really like about using OKRs is the flexibility. So the fact that you can give for yourself and for your team objectives and mention key results that will sustain your final objective, but you can stay very flexible with it. 
So that means that, for example, if a, in a specific time frame could be a month or a quarter, you realize with your team that something is off track, something is not working, or that you probably need to refocus what you're working on, or you find and you discover more interesting things and challenges to pour to, then you can be flexible and cross out that key result, discuss it internally with the team. And then again, with the transparency of the, of the tool, you can share and add a new key result that will sustain the final objective. So I really like the flexibility of this tool because it's really, you can see that digital companies are using it a lot and it makes totally sense because when you create a product, for example, you have so many different uh, features or challenges or coordination needed or uh, pilots or tests or data to, to check and, and you need to iterate the small successes and get rid of the failures and learn from it very quickly. So I think this tool is really something that helps people, uh, help teams and companies to stay really lean and flexible. And that's all about um, that I learned um, and, and that really helped me to stay flexible myself and very agile pursuing what I'm trying to pursue with, with the team. Yeah, and that that's great because that also just completely segues into the dare to fail under this um, OKR hygiene list, just uh, writing those objectives and creating those key results that you know are out there will tend, output will tend to be greater um, in the sense that if you're daring to write um, a goal, an objective, and you're trying to track it, then I feel like that's, that accountability will help you um, really try to think big and, and pursue something. Um, also, I think a strong uh, a tool and just kind of um, point is a, that OKRs is our tool and it's not a weapon. The OKR system is meant to pace a person, um, like to put a stopwatch on his own hand so he can gauge his own performance uh, from the book. And so, what do you think, um, Nicole, that this would this tool um, can be for uh, you know a small team of working together or for a company? Yeah, so I think first of all, something we learn from the book is that you can use this tool in different sides, uh, different team sides. So think about the startups, for example, like uh, the, using OKRs help startups to stay lean and also to survive. Like for startups, it's really important to use all the resources to achieve goals and objectives. So it's really important to use tools to sustain that growth. And this is a matter of survival. So for example, if you have a very small startup and you're building up a team and you're creating a new venture, even within a, a big corporation, and you wanna make sure that you are uh, achieving those goals and targets, you definitely need to measure them and uh, set up a, 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 a sort of a tool to align all your team on what are the priorities and the survival priorities. So the ones that really need to be part of the game. So to answer your question, I really think that something we learned from the book is that all sides um, of companies and teams can benefit from this uh, type of uh, um, uh, structure uh, and organization. So using uh, OKRs for coordinating a project, for example. And when you go and you think of a bigger organization, for example, or a bigger team, I'm not sure if you ever heard about the silos, like where the teams work very good, work very nicely, but they are not really connected with other parts of the company. And of course, they're losing a lot of opportunities of learning of growth opportunities. That's something that you probably don't have in a small team or in a startup where it's all ends on and everybody's pretty much connected with the colleagues. But if you think of the bigger companies, you definitely lose sight of what other colleagues are doing. And think about companies that are located in different areas of the world, different time zones, as we are right now, uh, or, you know, have different culture, different customers, different challenges, and so on. Like, you can definitely have silos very easily. 
and OKR can help you to not only work in a bigger corporation and, uh, and avoiding those styles, but also having that transparency among team members and no matter about the hierarchy, for example, but the power of an idea can be um, shared with other colleagues and other colleagues can know what other colleagues from in other part of the world of, of the company are working on and learning. And you probably can reiterate those successes even faster. So I think it, it really can be used in any size, in any kind of company and organization. And I personally use it also for, for my personal growth. Like, so, you know, during this time, during COVID time, we all have more time to focus on what's next and thinking uh, retrospectively what I will need to work on to to improve my skills, to to make sure that I'm relevant to, to and to my clients, to the business I support. So I think that using the OKR system for setting your own goals is also very important because then you can measure and track what you're working on in the, and see if you're really reaching those objectives and uh, also celebrate milestones uh, as a project manager would do, but also for your everyday life and your, for your personal development. And I really like this quote talking about managers being coaches, mentors, and architects. Because I really believe that this tool helps managers to be more coach um, and mentor because you basically let your team and your organization pick up their, their key results. So the way they will achieve those bigger objectives that has been set up together strategically as a team. And then the manager is really there to support the team to achieve those goals and to support and to remove any blocker along the way to get those key results on track. So I really think it gives a little bit of, a, a sh it shakes the structure and you make sure that it's more horizontally aligned, uh, which I think is really fascinating. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, in the book, there's a great story. I won't get into too many details because I'm not a um, microchip processor person, but Intel tells a story of how one of their sales pe people noticed that Motorola was totally conquering the market of selling these um, processing chips for computers and other things. And, and by the use of OKRs, Intel throughout the whole entire company was able to um, refocus within a matter of weeks and create a new chip. And then the, I mean, they even included marketing because they needed to create a new marketing, um, you know, attack to kind of really promote their new product, but it was an all hands on deck kind of situation. And everyone was in communication because they Intel was already using this OKR um, style sy system. So it's kind of really powerful to hear those stories where um, they see a problem or they see an issue. And um, even though the company is so big and so developed and so um, famous that they can still, you know, see danger in the sense of competition and, you know, through this um, objectives and key results that they can uh, make positive changes for their company and, um, you know, not lose money and, you know, other, other things like that. So it's very powerful. Um, I think the last uh, OKR kind of hygiene topic is be patient, um, be resolute. Every process requires trial and error. And I think that just shows how, yes, it's very true. We're all humans. We're all going to, you know, first we don't succeed, try, try again, you know, that kind of quote of just always be um, patient. Uh, so be patient with your your teams when you're trying to implement this and, and expect that there are going to be some errors, but know that um, with with time that they could really um, work out and, and move forward for you. Uh, I think a couple of things um, from these first three chapters of the book, it really has talked about um, engagement and the retention of, of business leaders and just being challenged that OKRs um, are just part of that focus and really can help um, uh, teams and companies just work together and, and yeah, be more of a horizontal kind of setup. Um, 
Another cool quote from the book are, OKRs are the Swiss army knives suited to any environment. Um, I, I'm, I myself have a little Swiss army knife that my dad had gifted me. And yeah, it's handy in trying to open some cheese, but then also it has scissors so it can help you um, cut something. And you know, that's uh, a little tool that you can carry with you. And OKRs are that for um, this business and personal environment. Um, so we would like to transition to our client's OKR story. And um, Nicole is going to be the one who um, has, has experienced this. So Nicole, for this client, what was it like to set up OKRs in a company? And do you have any experience with setting OKRs for a virtual team? Yeah. So, I mean, I have many examples in my mind. But first, um, something I want to share, connecting to what you were also speaking lately, is uh, the fact that the OKRs is um, giving you a way to be very ambitious and bold. And I think it's really important uh, for any organization, for also for your self-development, as we said, it, because you wanna give a broader objective and then measurement to achieve that objective. Um, and I think that is the main difference with MBO, as you explained before, that you're not trying to achieve that specific objective that you set up at the beginning of the year, but you're probably leaving out some growth opportunity as you go through the year. And the OKR system, though, gives you more flexibility, as we've been reading about. But also, it's a tool that helps you to kind of being very lean to change. Um, so, for example, with clients we, we work with in the hospitality industry, we have been experiencing a lot of small and bigger transformation. So if we talk think about the digital transformation that tour operators have been living lately in the last couple of years and uh, what is happening right now with COVID and the world that we're living. Um, so oh, oh, to answer your question, I think the, the examples I do have uh, by setting up OKRs uh, in a project or in a team is really making sure that the team is onboarded so that the specialist of whatever is their um, their area are drafting and writing and uh, actively part of uh, designing the strategy for the company itself. So one approach that I really like as a project manager is not going to a client and telling what they need to do, but it's more giving tools to this design together which are the trends and which are those areas of opportunities that we can tackle boldly and uh, fastly. So those uh, fast wins that a company can gain, uh, so important during a, a time of transition and disruptions as we are living nowadays in, uh, and in the hospitality sector uh, in general before COVID and, and right now. In talking about virtual teams, when we set up, for example, um, apps or we on, for example, we use an Excel file that we're going to be sharing with you, by the way, at the end of the webinar. So you can start drafting your own OKR for yourself and your organization. When we either use a sophisticated software or we do use an Excel file, uh, we want to make sure that the team has that transparency. Uh, they're setting the goals. They're setting the way they're going to be reaching the goal that we have the sponsor of the project and all the stakeholders um, uh, being actively part of the process. And we help them to stay on track. So to make sure that we have weekly, um, monthly and quarterly updates and that we gather the, one of the most important outputs of working together, which is which are learning and uh, what we, we executed well and we can reiterate um and virtually speaking it has been so important not only for international clients so for example courtney she's located in south korea i am currently located in rome and we collaborate with our colleagues in the united states in different time zones and we do have clients in europe um, as well so it has always been um, a great tool to use also to connect different talents in different areas of the world 
So for example, if you try to build a website and you know that source market comes from a specific area, why don't you connect with a uh, professional that who knows what it's like to be designing um, a prototype or an experience for that specific tools market. So in that case, having uh, OKRs as a tool can help you to virtually connect with those people. And we see it that it's more, more relevant than ever, you know, with also very um, good uh, best practice around the world of, for example, Spotify having all their employees uh, being connecting uh, remotely and making sure that they can choose wherever they want to be working from. And uh, having a big uh, generation of digital nomads as you know professionals spread around the world. So I think that working virtually is not only needed inside the company, uh, but it's also needed for making sure that you onboard uh, the best talent for a specific uh, objective that you may have internally. Uh, and it makes it easier to connect and to know what you're working for and what are your final objectives, even if you are connecting at a different time zone or uh, probably, you know, like working on, on a different time as well. Um, and having different sets of priorities. That makes sure that you do have the same sets of priorities and there is that transparency of seeing what you're colleagues from the engineering department, product department, sales department have been working on. Yeah, the beauty of OKRs and what we've done with Do It Well and just getting to see your team members and getting to see their OKRs. And also as from the project management side, it's a great tool. You can see, um, you can check in through the OKRs first and kind of see, has this person, you know, completed this key result or do they have a blocker? And you can kind of tell from um, the, the notes that they put into the file or the progress that they have between different weeks. It's a really uh, useful tool across, across departments and like Nicole said, across um, uh, different time zones and just kind of being able to check in with people before even having to try to send an email or a text. So it's, it's a great, uh, great source that, you know, we are able to to have. And lastly, Nicole, do you think OKRs are useful for teams and companies during a crisis? Yes, and we talked this many times during uh, this webinar because uh, during a crisis, we learn how it's important to be fast uh, on execution, but also to be very fast on picking up trends and uh, understanding where you can make your business survive talking about the survival game that we touched base on when we were discussing about how to set up a company uh, as a startup and making sure that your OKRs are a tool to survive into in the market that you're working on. Uh, so definitely I believe that OKRs are very useful during a crisis and because obviously they help you to uh, tackle those objectives and being very flexible to change your mind very quickly. If you see that something is not going the way you were expecting to, or it's not giving you the numbers that you were needing to survive. Um, and also during the crisis, you need to be very uh, flexible and reactive. So the fact that you can change the way that you achieve those, the objective is, a, is something that is really important and agile in that sense as a mentality. And so definitely, yes, I think that it's a, tool, it's a tool that is really needed to be also creative to imagine what is next. And that's something that we've been seeing uh, tour operators doing a lot in museums and attractions and theme parks, like delivering virtual experiences, for example, during this incredible um, situation that we were all living. We, we often call it the worst case scenario for the tourism sector, but definitely it's been such a, uh, difficult time for everybody. Um, so definitely like uh, we've seen, uh, for example, uh, tourism operators reacting and moving, switching their know-how from being, uh, you know, like uh, the hospitality expert to being content creator and starting delivering those experiences, switching and disrupt the way that they were delivering the experiences from, uh, you know, like delivering the experiences in a park, in a museum. Uh, to talk about uh, many, many topics 
to entertain the audience online uh, and stay connected do empathically as well uh, during this difficult time. Uh, so definitely setting up OKRs and objectives, it should be very easy to make sure that the team is aligned toward a, a final goal and measure as well the output. There's many, many times we add as a, as a learning um, of clients not measuring success and uh, helping them measuring it uh, as actually being a great motivator for the team. So imagine right now, like during this big crisis, most of the team has been replaced or, you know, like transitioned to other duties. Uh, so I think it's a, so important to show which are the results and celebrate uh, those successes that we give for granted sometimes. So, but when we start measuring where we see changes, we can motivate team members from generating engagement offline to start generating engagement online. It is a way to stay connected with your customers and your guests. If you can definitely motivate your team to do it, uh, and uh, be proud and celebrate every single milestone you 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 achieve. So I think is yes to answer your question, it, it, it might be a very useful tool for a crisis as well. Great, yeah, and that kind of just focuses on to what the OKR superpowers are. And so this book, uh, Measure What Matters, it kind of breaks up the book into four sections, and we'll be covering those four sections in the next. Um, different webinars um, to come. So the first one will be focus and commit to priorities. Uh, the second one, align and connect for teamwork, then track for accountability and stretch for amazing. And I think it's really important to, um, to, to know all of these different superpower areas. But like you said, Nicole, like especially when you do get to that point where your team can celebrate and where your team can see that success, it really does empower your team and that really will come out into wanting to invest more in the company, invest more in the project, and then you just really have, you know, a win-win situation just overall. You'll your customers will eventually get affected by this great um, objective and key result planning, and then your team members are so engaged because they feel like they're making a difference through um, their own personal OKRs that the team has come up to with together. Um, so next month we will continue to help. You focus and commit to priorities using OKRs. Uh, check in the comments below after the webinar to find a free OKR template and contact us if you have any questions. And thanks so much for joining with our first uh, OK using OKRs in the hospitality industry webinar.